which is super exciting. So my name is Courtney Jones. I work in the Career Development Center. I'm the Career Identity Coach for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, so I work primarily with freshmen in that college. We are trying not to say the acronym anymore, so that's why I did that. Um, so I just want to give you a, a little bit of information about the lovely career guide before we get started. So those of you who got one, it's awesome. Those of you who did not, grab one on your way out. Because this particular book has a little bit of everything about everything professional development related. In here, you're going to be able to find a general list of services that we offer at the Career Development Center, as well as our beautiful staff photo so you know who is who. There are examples about EPAC, so how to make appointments with your career counselor, how to find jobs and internships, as well as how to look for events like the launch that we're at today. Lots of activities, and then I know some of you are probably excited about the resume launch that's coming up and how to write cover letters. There's examples in here of how to do that because there's a lot of ways to do it. And just in general, you're going to find a lot of great information in here. So I highly recommend you to take one home, bring it with you to the different launches that we have. We do have launches coming up on resume writing, cover letters, LinkedIn, and other variety of topics. So we, of course, welcome you to attend those. And if you attend enough, you get a spiffy t-shirt and certificate. So tonight you're here for career fair success. And that's a really great topic because we have career fairs coming up. So I want to take a moment to introduce you to your launch presenters. And then also we're going to split this room up because we're going to have two things going on at the same time for this launch. I know. Our, our video people are like, whoa. So first, starting off with our presenters. Down on the end, we have Megan and Javine. Hey. We have Savannah Russell. Hello. And Fatima Fatacho. Hi. <coughs> All right. So they are going to teach you in this room about tips and tricks to be ready for a career fair. And then I'm going to take this half of the room, and you're going to have a chance to go outside and practice networking with our two employers who are here tonight. So we have Waffle House, who is here. We also have Bandwidth. And both of these are fantastic partners that we love to partner with from the community. So you have a chance to ask questions, ask what they're looking for at a career fair. It's very informal. Um, so it's a chance for you to learn and for you to practice. So about halfway through the hour, we're going to take this, bring you back in, and take you out so you have a chance to practice. So without further ado, this room. Come with me. Decide to learn. <laughs> okay, so to start off, raise your hand if you've ever been to a career fair. Okay, it's like a pretty decent number. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I'm Megan. I'm Savannah. And like she mentioned, I am Fatima. Welcome and thank you for coming to spend the evening with us today. Today, like Courtney mentioned, we're going to teach you a little bit about career fair success and some of the tips and tricks we've learned along the way going to career fairs and some of the things that we've heard from recruiters about the things they would like to see from potential applicants at career fairs. So the three main things that we'll be talking about today before you guys go outside and have your mock career fair are how to prepare for the career fair, what to wear to the career fair, and how to give a winning elevator speech, which um, raise your hand if you've ever heard of an elevator speech. Okay, a great amount again. So you're already experts at that, but we'll just keep practicing. Does anyone know where the idea of an elevator speech came from? Yes. Could you mention your name? Uh, my name is Joa. Joa. Um, an elevator speech is something that you should be able to something you should say about yourself and be able to say it in the amount of time that it takes to get from the bottom floor to the top floor of the elevator. That's a good, really good summary. From a career fair aspect, an elevator speech is something I see as starting the conversation. Usually for people, especially if it's their first career fair, it can be a little bit nervous. And when you get to the recruiter, you're like, okay, I can't just keep staring at them. I got to say something. This is something very easily to kind of get the conversation started, get the ball rolling. And we're eventually, if we have time, we might have you pair off to kind of like do a mock. Um, elevator speech. So when you do get out there to try out your skills, you have like an example already working in your head. All right. So some of you here 
might know exactly what you want to do, like the top guy. Or you could be like me when I went to my first career fair. I'm like, I see people talking. Some people got smiles and other people just sweat and stand there. So hopefully after this presentation today, a lot of us are going to be at the top fair. Even though you're going to be nervous, you're going to have some tips and tricks in your bag to help you get that top guy from the office. OK, and um, what are some myths that some of you guys have heard about career fairs? Have you heard anything? What about that they're only for seniors? Raise your hand if you've heard that. Um, what about if they're only for people looking for jobs? <laughs> Thanks, and you. then um, what if the recruiter doesn't take your resume, then they're not interested in you? Well, apparently you guys are experts at career fairs. <laughs> <laughs> And some of the other myths, I had a presentation with civil engineers yesterday, and a lot of it was like, no one is recruiting for civil engineers. All of those, like Savannah said, are myths, and we're going to explain why. So first of all, most of us go to a career fair, whether it's an internship, co-op, or full-time job. And actually, that is one of the best ways now to get a job. So I've had two co-ops so far. and. I've had conversations with the HR coordinator in our co-op, and one of the tips she told me is that now, because of online applications, whenever she posts a job, there's like hundreds and hundreds of people that apply for a job. There's not enough hours in the day that they're going to pay her to sit through the computer and go through those hundreds and hundreds of applications. So the first line of defense they use is algorithms that pick out keywords in people's resumes to kind of like narrow down that hundreds of applicants, maybe to a few dozen that a human can physically sit through and go through. And after those dozens come down, she goes through and maybe calls a few of them for an interview. What she prefers is that there's only so much you can learn from a resume. What she prefers is that going into person, talking to someone, not only seeing how they look on resume, but how they interact with her. She said it's more comfortable for her to hire someone that way than sitting through a resume, going through phone interview and an actual interview. So going to a physical career fair is actually one of your best chances to get a job. You're getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Some of us may not look as good on paper as we are in person. So during a career fair, you have that extra opportunity to not only say it, but prove it in how you interact and conduct yourself with that recruiter. Also, career fairs are great networking opportunities. Whether you are looking for what's new and hot in the field and major you're training for, or you're just curious, maybe you already have a job, you're just seeing like if someone else wants you. You want to see if someone else will want to hire you. Like I said, great networking opportunity. And last but not least, to make a lasting impression, because you're having that one-on-one -on -one contact with people. You're talking to someone. You might not be looking for a job, but you might be someday looking for a job and you can know someone or like get in contact with someone that someday when you are when you do need that job when graduation comes you're like hey I remember this person let me email them ask them if they have any openings in their companies does anyone have any questions right now okay let's get this thing going and then um, how you should prepare prepare for a career fair so you need to register for their career fair. You can find that on EPAC to kind of find out all the information about like what you need to do. And you can go ahead and download the career fair app because that's really helpful. And you need to like research like who's going to be there and like plan on meeting with like your B companies and um, meet with them first and choose them. So like you can kind of get some practice and like learning how you need to interact with them while you're at the career fair and like researching them and stuff. Yeah, if it's your first career fair, you might be kind of nervous or just unsure of how your little elevator speeches and meetings with everyone's going to go, which is why we recommend starting with a company that isn't totally your dream company, just so that you're feeling comfortable with the career fair by the time you get to your dream company. Um, and then for your dream companies, your A, top companies that you really would love to work for, make sure that you create little cheat sheets for them and research their websites, the About Us, so that you come prepared to the career fair with something to talk about with them and that you really look like you know a lot about their company and would be a valuable asset. So, so, uh, so, oh, sorry. so some things that you should be researching about the company is like if 
different ways that you're interested in their product and service, where they're located, if you think that they would hire someone with your skills, if your major and your interests line up, and to see if you can apply online before the career fair. And then when you meet them, you can say, I applied online last week, like I wanted to follow up, give you my resume, and really show that you're interested and help you stand out as an applicant. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. And then beyond researching the companies, you should also have a couple of things ready to ask them at the career fairs, especially for your top companies. Just ways to make their, the company seem unique and to make you seem unique. So examples of questions would be, what do they look for in applicants? Um, questions about anything on their website, or you can ask them what their day-to-day -day job is like, why they enjoy working at this company, things like that to really create that lasting impression. Megan touched on a great point about research. One of the almost worst things you could say, unless they're really, really small companies, which they kind of expect that kind of question, it's like, so what do you do? Like asking a recruiter kind of that, or like, what does your company make? Even if you don't have time beforehand to research, when you do to the, go to the career fairs, you have those booklets, and they have a little bit of summary on what these companies actually do and some of the roles that they're recruited on. And if you did your homework well, like Megan mentioned, you would have applied online already. And you can use that to start the conversation. I've already applied online. And usually they make a note, this person is already in our system. And based on how your conversation to go, they might actually go look you up online and pull up the application you've already submitted. So following the online application, another great way to be prepared and to create that lasting impression would be to bring your resume to the career fair. So make sure you print out like 10 or so copies of it before you get to the career fair to pass out to the companies that you want to give it to. And then in line with being prepared with your resume, try to have your elevator speech prepared, which if you guys want, you can take a moment to turn to the part, like the person next to you and practice your elevator speeches with each other. Do you want to give an example first? Yeah. Should we give the formula first? So um, yeah. an elevator speech is, we start with your name, your major, what you're studying, preferably like, when you're going to graduate. Some short-term goals, and if you're looking for an internship or a job you mentioned, and if you know what kind of position you're looking for right now, you can kind of like mention that and end it off with a question. So and for example, if I was going to give my elevator speech, I would say like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. My name is Megan Angevine. I'm a junior at NC State. I'm double majoring in international studies and economics, minoring in business administration. I recently studied abroad in Spain, and I'm also fluent in Spanish. During my study abroad, I learned to appreciate diverse cultures and to adapt to unexpected circumstances. I currently work as a TA and also as a career ambassador at the Career Development Center, presenting to groups of over 80 students. I hope to work in international consulting someday and would love to learn more about your company and see if it fits with my expertise and academic experience. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to turn to your partner and start practicing things like that to be able to give at the mock career fair. Okay. Why up there? Because that this is great so far. Perfect. All right. Okay, let's go. So I heard lots of good chatters around. Any brave souls want to share? Zach. Thank you, Zach. Stand up totally. <laughs> the stage is all yours. All right. Hello, my name is Zach Wolf. I'm a freshman here with a sophomore level worth of credits at North Carolina State University. At the end of this fall, I'm looking to CODA into mechanical engineering. Previously, I worked an internship opportunity at a company that owns Belkin Engineering, where I worked on creating wire harnesses in Clio for the Oshkosh JLTV project that they're working with. I'm currently interested in either an internship or a co-op opportunity that will allow me to apply my mechanical engineering skills in a corporate setting. And Perfect. That was that great. Was really good. Thank you, Zach. For okay, sharing. so as you may have noticed, he highlighted what he's interested in. He highlighted what he brings to the table, his experiences, and what he's looking for now. Which is a really good job. And thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Oh, would you like a piece of candy? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that we've told you how to prepare for a career fair, another crucial element is what you actually wear to the fair. Now there's a lot of companies that are very, very relaxed, especially with the dress code. But when you do go to a career fair, we like to tell you to err on the side of like being overdressed versus underdressed. 
But guys, you guys are lucky, suit and tie, and you're ready to go. Ladies, we can also rock a suit, a dress, skirts, a blouses, as long as it's on the conservative side. And we like to say when you go into a career fair, like, not too much perfume, but like, good amount. Be confident. If you need to stand in front of a mirror and do your power poses for a while, you know, for like speech. Wonder Woman, you can do that too. You can, like Megan mentioned, you sh sh stand on the companies that maybe might not be on your top. You kind of like use that to build up your confidence and then work your way up. In conclusion, when it comes to dress, err on the side of conservative and cautionous. A dress tells a lot about you and you want that first impression with the employer to be really, really good. And a lot of you guys might be wondering what you need to bring with you to a career fair. So the number one thing is you need a resume. Like you need a couple of different copies of your resumes to hand out to the different companies that you're going to be talking to. But you also need somewhere to carry this. So like bringing a portfolio, which also has like a notepad where you can jot down notes, know who you talk to and things like that. So also bring a pen. If you guys have business cards, I would recommend bringing those as well. If you don't, no stress. That's yeah. Not a big deal. That's okay. okay, and then following up post career fair, um, definitely, definitely make sure to write um, thank you notes and use the business cards that you've received to add those people on LinkedIn so that you can um, stay in touch with them and really be networking. And when you add them on LinkedIn, make sure that you're personalizing that invitation and saying, like, Hi, we met today at the career fair. It was great talking to you. Like, I'd love to stay in contact. Um, that really, like, makes your chances better of them adding you back and you guys staying in touch and you um, creating that lasting impression that we talked about earlier. And then, like I was saying, you would send thank you cards to your top companies um, and then email anyone that you really connected with also from their business cards so that you can be keeping in touch and trying to um, have a contact at that company. Does anyone Anybody have, have questions? Any questions? Concerns, tips, feedback? Yes. So, wait, you write thank you notes to all the companies you talk to, or just the companies? The ones that you're really interested in. If you didn't really care about, I mean, it would be really nice of you to write a thank you card to all of them, but you don't need to if you're not like trying to pursue further contact. And if you can do a handwritten note, I know that's kind of hard now with everything being global, long distance. That's actually really, really good compared to an email. Usually work people have like 50,000 emails a day and things get lost in it. So having a handwritten note would be really, really good. And also a thank you note, it's like your last chance. Maybe during the talk, you kind of screwed up a little. Underneath a thank you note, you can kind of mention a few pointers. Some of the points that like when you got home was like, I should have said that when I was talking to him or her. You can add that underneath them. Thank you for their time and say I hope to hear from you soon. Blah, blah, blah. And then also in your thank you note, you could be noting like things that you guys did talk about. That way they can remember who you were because they met a lot of people that day. And our lovely job search has examples of almost everything we mentioned today. So if you forget later on, just open up that book. It's also online on our website, careers.ncsu.edu. The full PDF is available. These are all resources for you to use. So when Create Day comes, you got it. What if the person at the booth that you're talking to is not representing your major and you want to talk to someone that's maybe in a different department? Do you have any suggestions for that along with what if you're not even in that college and it's engineering career fair? Can you maybe go? Yes. Okay, um, I'm a communication major, so an engineering career fair, you would look at that and think, okay, maybe that wouldn't be the best fit. But all companies need people to communicate. They all need different positions. They all have HR departments, and they need people to, like, speak with other people. They need people, people. <laughs> and, like, all different kind of companies are hiring all different kinds of people. So that may make you even stick out a little bit more. So if you're not an engineering major and you want to go to the engineering career fair, I'd recommend that because that, it could benefit you as well. Okay, so thank you guys for coming. Um, the next thing that we're going to do for you guys is to switch places in the next minute or two so that you can go up the mock career fair. We just wanted to note that you can come to our drop-in hours at Pullen, and it's from 11 to 2, Monday through Friday, and you can get your resume critiqued, your cover letter critiqued, or make appointments for a mock interview, which you would do through EPAC. And then 
before you guys head out, if you can all pull out your phones and um, just so that we can like mark attendance for today, if you have any suggestions for us, things like that, um, just scan this code or go to the website. And up here in red is the title of our launch, and I'm Megan Fatima Savannah. If you have Snapchat, you can Snapchat it, the website will pull up. Okay, nice. I'm glad you've got some experience under your belt now. You'll be prepared when it comes to your first real one. Um, like Courtney said earlier, I'm Megan. I'm Savannah. I'm Fatima. And we'll be talking to you today more about career fair success. So does anyone want to share their experience of this mock career fair? Like, how'd you feel? Did you do your elevator speech? Make a good connection. You guys are out there. <laughs> if you raise your hand, I will throw you candy. What kind of conversation right. did you guys have? <laughs> Anyone else? Or feedback sure. on the career fair? What did you guys think of it? <laughs> oh, no problem. All right. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and just jump on in then. So the main things that we're going to talk about in here, wrapping up from your mock career fair, are how to prepare for a real career fair, what you want to be wearing to the career fair, and if we have time, we'd like to get to how to give a winning elevator speech, which you will hopefully be doing with everyone you meet at the career fair. So, the guy at the top, when he goes to a career fair, he knows what he's doing. The one at the bottom might need some help. Today, after this presentation, we hope you would all be at the top because, like Megan mentioned, we're going to talk to you about how to prepare for a career fair what to wear, and that magical elevator speech that breaks the ice and gets the conversation going. Have, I know you've all heard of elevator speeches because we've been like screaming it out, but anyone know where the concept of an elevator speech actually came from? All right, so, oh, okay, yes, thank What's you. Okay, <laughs> great question. Okay. We well, will go over them a little bit more later, but basically an elevator speech is um, based off of the concept that if you were to walk into the elevator, um, into an elevator and you saw like the CEO of your company or I don't know, the chancellor or something, what would you say to him in the 30 seconds that you went from the bottom floor to the top floor of the building? So it's just like a good little way to introduce yourself um, and to try to make a lasting impression. Um, we'll be talking about them more later though, but. Good question. Thank you for being brave, though. I'm pretty sure you're not the only one yeah. here. So thank you so much. This is the first launch of the semester, like first like career fair and like relaunch of the semester. So like, not not everyone else has been to any either. Okay, so how many of you guys have heard that career fairs are only for seniors or people looking for jobs? Mm -hmm. Some people. <laughs> Or that, like, to go to a career fair, like, and they don't, ex like, they don't take your resume that they're not interested in you or that you shouldn't reach out to that company again. Okay, okay well, these are people, myths. Yeah. <laughs> Another common myth is that if you, like, if it's the engineering career fair and you're not majoring in engineering, you shouldn't go. But you yeah. definitely still should. Um, Savannah's a comm major, and like she was saying earlier, um, they need PR at any company, they need HR, all, like you should go to any career fair because you can gain networking contacts. So one of the main reasons people go to career fairs is you're either looking for an internship, a co-op, or a job. However, those are not the only reasons. People that may already have a job might actually go to a career fair to one, look at more opportunities or kind of like gauge what's the new and latest things in their career or field. It's also a great networking opportunity, especially for freshmen and sophomores. Maybe you don't know yet what you might want to do, but you can definitely talk to people that are in those roles to kind of learn about it and also get contact information so that when you are ready to apply for a job, 
you have someone's contact that you can, I remember us talking last career fair, blah, 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 at NC State. I, hey, Jim, do you guys have any openings, any internship based on how you connected with them that day and how you maintained that? They could be a first step for you to ask about what's going on in a company. Raise your hand if you're a freshman. Okay, oh, that's a lot. That's great. It's awesome that you guys are already here. You'll be so prepared. Um, a really good tip that I received as a freshman is that you should still be going to career fairs and stuff, even if you're not looking for jobs or internships now, because that way when you are going to a career fair your junior and senior year, you will not be meeting these people. You will already know them, and they will know you, and it just gives you a leg up because you already have a contact at the company. And career fairs can be a little bit intimidating, and everything that's scary, the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. So definitely the more passes, the better with elevated speech, talking to recruiters, interacting with recruiters. Definitely. You guys are already ahead coming to events like this, trying to educate yourself practice to be knowledgeable so that when you do go, you do a good job. Okay, so to prepare for a career fair, like the first step you need to do is like look it up on EPAC and register to go and kind of see like what kind of companies are going to be there and like, well, first of all, like when it's going to be because that's important, You're just registering and then you can go ahead and download the career fair app and then plan on meeting with your B companies first. So like look at what companies are coming, like decide like who's your A company, like who you, do you really want to talk to? Like, who's your B? Like, maybe they're not your top choice, but you could see yourself working there. And then, like, research them as well and, like, kind of practice with them. Okay, so then following with what you would do with your B companies, your A companies, your top companies, the companies that you would love to work for, make sure that you come prepared and you've researched them so that you can be impressive instead of seeming like you don't know that much or don't care that much about them. So before you go to the career fair, make sure that you're looking on their website, and that you have questions that you can be asking them, that you know where the company is located, if they match well with your major, your skills, your interests. And you should also see if you can apply online before you get to the career fair. That way, when you get there, you can tell them, I've already applied online, but I wanted to follow up and talk to you. And that way, you make a better lasting impression, and you really seem like you're committed, and you would be an asset at this company. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a couple of questions to ask them so that you, again, seem really interested and help stand out. Uh, what do you think would be good examples of questions to ask a recruiter at a career fair? Just raise your hand. Thank you. Great. That's a really good question. Just to learn more about the day-to-day -day culture. Sorry. Anyone else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, more just like about the company, day-to-day -day tasks. A better way to phrase that would be, um, like, what do you do every day? Like, what do you do on, like, your day-to-day -day basis? Like, what does your job entail? What they have done to get to where they are. That's a great question. Um, and then some other things you can be asking them is questions about their website are always a good option. Um, and you can ask them, like we were talking about, what you enjoy there what makes their company unique, or what they're looking for in an applicant so that you can make sure to tailor your resume and really know that you fit at this company. Um, speaking of resumes, make sure that you bring your resume to the career fair prepared and ready to have a couple of copies to pass out to companies as another way for them to know you and um, to really show that you're prepared. And then, like we were talking about earlier, along with your resume, you would want to have an elevator speech prepared. So. You want me to do mine again? So, an elevated speech, we like to use a little formula, and it's also in the job search guide. I don't know if any of you guys picked it up earlier. So, your name, your major, when you're graduating, some of your short term goals, if you have any previous internship experience that kind of ties in into what you're looking for today, give a little bit of background on that, and like end it off with a question or something to like to push the conversation back to the recruiter to get the dialogue going back and forth. And Megan has an amazing one. Yeah, so it's just kind of like a little template that you would use as like kind of a lead-in to talking to each recruiter. So if I were to crave her, I would go up and say, hi, it's so nice to meet you. My name is Megan Angevine. I'm a junior double majoring in economics and international studies, minoring in business administration. I recently got back from studying abroad in Spain and I'm fluent in Spanish. In Spain, I 
like while studying abroad, I learned to appreciate diverse cultures and to become more flexible and adaptable. I currently work as a TA and also as a career ambassador at the Career Development Program, where I present to over 80 students on different professional topics. Um, I hope to work at your company or I'm very interested in your company and I'm excited to talk to you more about it, which would like lead them into then telling you more about the company. So it's just like a good way to kind of get a footing. So if you guys wanna to turn to your neighbor beside you and maybe practice an elevator speech a little, starting with your name, your year, your major, um, and then some experience, or you wanna talk about companies that you're interested in. And we'll walk around a little too, cause that's a lot. Okay, that's here. That's really cool. Yeah, that was good. Okay, I you could say like, what's your major? Okay. Um, are you hoping to do a co-op or anything? Okay, yeah. So you could just say like, is it your freshman year? Yeah. So you would want to say like, hey, like I'm whatever Emily. Yeah. Um, I'm majoring in whatever type of engineering, and you could say like, I'm a freshman. I'm really um, say like. I'm really excited about becoming or like learning more about engineering and I would love to like hear more about your company because I've researched them and I'm really excited to be able to talk to you more about them because I'm looking to gain some experience, you know what I mean? And just really stress that you're like eager, energetic, like you'll learn it type of, you know what I mean? Like you got it. Like You totally could. Or like, um, I mean, your experience related. But if she was like, if she was majoring in engineering, she could still say like, I worked as a veterinarian assistant, and like through that, I have gained skill. You know what I mean? Like, you can just try to make it applicable. Like, you could even say like, like I mean, anything. Like, you could say like, as a summer camp counselor, I've learned leadership skills. To the, you know what I mean? So you'll, there's like, you should be able to find something and just like pull it from your resume. But if it's not totally relative job experience, that doesn't matter as much like your younger years. But it's really good to still be going and just like get a footing, you know what I mean? Your elevator speech? Um, it should be roughly 30 seconds, which like me giving it to you right now sometimes feels a little uncomfortable to me because it's just like a speech, like I'm rambling a little in my mind. Um, but in real life, it's so much more casual and you like maybe got to practice it a little bit outside where like I would say hi It's so nice to meet you and instead of immediately being like my name is Megan Angevine Like he would say oh, it's so nice to meet you too And then I would say I'm majoring this like oh cool and I'd be like oh, yeah I just came back from Spain. Like, wow, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it flows naturally, but it's just nice to have like that template so that you're prepared and that you're not just like they don't ever want to be having to like prompt you to talk. Like you should know what you're gonna say. So that's like the purpose of this totally. Would either of you wanna share them up front? You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> understandable, like, totally understandable. Sorry, Can I hear you? Oh, oh, you're totally fine. Can I hear it though? <laughs> Okay, I'll hear it now, and then I won't call you up to hear it in front of everyone. Feel? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me hear it now. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to go first or me? No, I'll pick somebody over there. I'll go first. Okay. Like, it's rough. Like, I've never done that. No, you're totally yeah, good. Too. That's, like, the purpose of this is just to be, like, getting more comfortable with it. Because it won't be word for word every time. It's just, like, a template to, like, so that you're not having to be prompted to say things. Like, you want to be prepared. They want to be, you want them to feel like they... You want it to seem like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> you do. You totally do. It's about you. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Sean Epperson. I'm currently a freshman at Texas State, but I'm graduating early, so I'll be graduating December 2020. I'm double majoring in biology. Wow. Going to medical school. Double majoring and graduating early. That's yeah. impressive. <laughs> 
um, I previously interned at the local hospital from back home. Um, there, I think my, my, my role was to clean up in emergency rooms, I also communicated with the ambulances, um, yeah. triage, um, I assisted on a few surgeries. I wow, this is incredible experience. Yeah. I don't know why you said you didn't know what you are talking about. <laughs> I also worked in a pediatrician's office for over the summer, and there basically I was the first person that the parents and patients seen when they came to the door. Um, I checked them in, I took them back to the room. So, uh, and just like make sure everyone was comfortable. Yeah. Um, currently looking for an internship or a job. Sweet. So, currently looking for an internship or maybe even a part time job, and I think I'd be a like, yeah, and then like a good thing to say instead of like, so I'd love to like learn more about you or whatever, that would make you sound unexperienced, which you didn't do, but it's just like a common thing. People do it be like, yeah, I'm really excited to learn about your company. You would want to say like, I'm really excited to talk to you more about the opportunities you have or something. That way you're prompting them of like a way to answer, you know what I mean? And it just like flows into casual conversation. Instead of like, I want to learn about your company. And they're like, oh, why doesn't she know anything? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm actually not calling on them. They did. But did you find anyone? I found people, but gave promised her I wouldn't. About. Okay. Yeah, we could actually volunteer. No, I really would like to call on you. I feel like you have great experience. You did a great job. I'm just like, especially for your child, is awesome. Is but I do not want to make you come up here. So you can sit and talk. This is a judgment free. Totally your call. <laughs> You don't have to. You did great. Do you want to come up and give yours? I didn't get to hear it. Understandable. Hmm? Totally good. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay, so is everyone feeling a little bit better about their elevator speech? Maybe you've now started one, you're a little more comfortable, a little more ready to go to the career fair. Does anybody want to share their elevator speech or think that their partners is worth sharing? It's fine. Okay, we'll just move right into what to wear then. So, having the correct documentation and Physically looking are both equally important when it comes to a career fair. Usually study sales that people form about 10 to 12 different impressions of you before you even open your mouth. So when you do go to a career fair, you want to make sure you're dressed for the occasion. I know now there's a lot of laid back companies, especially with dress code. But when it comes to career fairs, we like to advise to err on the side of caution to overdress versus underdress and also err on the side of conservativeness. So guys, when it comes to you guys, suit, tie, always good to go. Ladies, you can go suit, tie, skirt, dress, as long as it's on the conservative side. And when in doubt, go full blown versus being underdressed because when you're competing against someone and you guys are like tied to tight, the recruiter is probably gonna be looking for like the slightest thing to um, change the ranks. And you wanna make sure that everything you're presenting for that day is in your best interest. Okay, and then what you need to bring to the career fair. So number one is you need to bring a couple um, copies of your resume to hand out. And you, you want to give these to the company and like just kind of like make sure that they know that you're interested and they get your name out there. But you also need somewhere to carry these, so like bringing like a portfolio and like also having paper in there where you can take notes on the companies who you spoke with so you can like connect with them later. And as well as like a pen, that's important too. And if you guys have business cards, business cards are great to bring, but like it's really not not like stressed if you don't have one. Okay, and then following up after the career fair, with your top companies, make sure that if you got any business cards that you add them on LinkedIn and personalize the message to say like, hey, we met today at the career fair. It was great talking to you about whatever. Like I'd really like to stay in contact and that way you network today and you have some good contacts at the company, especially for you freshmen for in the years ahead, you'll already know people. If you really hit it off, you could also email them and just like start chatting with them, ask follow-up questions if you um, feel the need to. Um, and then 
be sending them thank yous for your top companies as well to just really show that you appreciated it and to help you stand out further. That is about all we have right now. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, tips? Yes. Okay, so as a freshman, one of my goals is to get a co-op eventually sometime. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the requirements that I have to code up into my degree plan. So say I'm at the career fair and I want a co-op, and I'm going to aim for getting a co-op. If I can code up in my spring semester, does that mean I can start a co-op in the summer after the spring semester? Mm. I, yes, but before you can do that, you have to do the co-op orientation, which is in Poland, get all the documents set up. Actually, in the spring, there is a co-op career fair that's only invited to co-op students. So it's a good opportunity. And when it comes to the career fairs next week, just say my intent major is this. Good question. Okay. Does anyone else have questions? I'm just going to give a plug for partnering with your academic advisor and the new change of college. Yeah. Feel, yeah. That's what I was saying. Oh. <laughs> it's all yours. I have so much to call on you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good evening. I'm Chris Reese. I'm director of the Student Life Center, which is a new initiative in the College of Textiles, partnering with industry and students so that students can turn their experiential and applied learnings into societal contributions. So really doing a deeper dive on some of the careers through leadership, entrepreneurship, and community involvement. And I echo what our three career ambassadors have said here tonight and following the checklist. I saw by show of hands the majority of you are freshmen, which is outstanding. And when you go through career season, absolutely go to at least one semester and even observe, even if you don't have an elevator pitch prepared. And if you think you might want to practice an elevator pitch, look for a table that's not as busy because sometimes the ones that have 50 people lines deep might be in a really fast, intense, uh, quick turnaround, but some of the ones who aren't as busy will gladly welcome the conversation. And then something that I've seen where if, if you lose your train of thought or you forget your elevator pitch, think, okay, name, major, and state what my passions are, and look to see if someone has some sort of name badge or maybe a signal that they're an NC State alum. You could ask them about their day, ask them about the experience, ask them about what it was like to be an NC State student so that you get them thinking and it gives you a moment to remember, okay, yeah, all right, brain freeze over, okay, I'm back on. So if you get the other person to start speaking. And then as you continue to explore other opportunities here on campus, I wanted to give a plug because we're promoting this with our College of Textile students as well. A lot of opportunities campus-wide for exploration and really thinking big picture about what, what problems you wanna solve, what do you wanna to contribute to in society, and so, some of you may have seen the news about three deans that are partnering for this design thinking workshop opportunity. If you do a Google search on NC State, look up deans and design thinking. That application deadline is coming up really quickly. I, I can't remember if it's this Friday or if it's next week. And then uh, another event that, or excuse me, another opportunity is social entrepreneurship. And that's a very new student initiative for students to be able to work on teams and work on greater good type projects and it's operating much like a startup if you google social entrepreneurship nc state you can find the application i just did that on my phone right now too mm -hmm. any other thoughts questions items you want me to cool. comment on that was great thank you, you so much thank you right. hey, you're welcome do, does anyone else have a question okay um if you do end up having more questions there is a lot of information in your job search guide and if you didn't get one of those you can come see us after and we can give you one too so, oh, sorry, you have like two more minutes left, misleading on my part. Um, thank you guys for coming out. Um, we do have walk-ins from 11 to 2 on Monday through Friday at Poland Hall, and you can also make an appointment via EPAC if you want to get your resume critiqued, your cover letter critiqued, or help, get help with a mock interview before you have a real one. And then this is our last thing really quick before you leave. If you can pull out your phones and either go to Snapchat or just Safari and type in that URL and just give us a little bit of feedback for today. That'd be great. Thank you.